जय हिंद नमस्ते दिस इज कुणाल मेहता फ्रॉम मेक मी साइंटिफिक एंड इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिराइव एन एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द सेंटर ऑफ मास ऑफ सिस्टम ऑफ टू पार्टिकल्स एंड देन ऑफ कोर्स यू कैन टेक इट फॉरवर्ड टू एन पार्टिकल्स एज वेल सो वॉट वी हैव ओवर हियर इज वी हैव टू पार्टिकल्स हुज मास इज आर एम वन एंड एम टू रिस्पेक्टिवली सो दिस इज पार्टिकल ऑफ मास एम वन दिस इज द पार्टिकल ऑफ मास एम टू now since this is y axis and this is the x axis so the m1 has coordinates x1 y1 so that means this is y1 and this is x1 in the same way i can also say that this coordinate is x2 and of course this coordinate is y2 but with respect to the origin i can also call this position vector as r1 so position vector shows the position of the particle and since it is a vector its head should be towards the particle and the tail must be at the origin and now i can express r1 vector as x1 i cap plus y1 j cap and you do understand this very well in the same way this is the position vector r2 for particle number 2 having mass m2 so this is r2 that is equal to x2 i cap plus y2 j cap right now see before we go ahead i just want to make few points very very clear that suppose this is a particle which is moving in x direction and then how would you represent its velocity instantaneous velocity instantaneous velocity will be given by dv by dt sorry i made a mistake so the instantaneous velocity v will be equal to dx by dt where x is the change in the where x is the position actually so when the position changes the displacement happens and that displacement is dx in time dt so the instantaneous velocity v is dx by dt in the same way if the particle is moving along y direction then the instantaneous velocity along y direction can be given by dy by dt but if i say that the particle goes along a plane like this then in this case i should be very specific that i am supposed to draw a position vector r and that velocity of this particle which is moving in a in a plane is given by dr by dt correct so these are some of the basic things okay another basic thing is that you should be able to understand that if d by dt of a plus b that is equal to and if a and b are not constants then it is equal to da by dt plus db by dt this is equation number 2 and let me call this as equation number 1 now it may happen that i may also go reverse the way like da by dt plus db by dt is equal to d by dt of a plus b anyhow it is the same now the third thing that you should remember is f external external forces that are the net forces basically acting on the particles that is equal to mass of the body into acceleration right now let's go back to the particles over here so what do we have is we have two particles and the center of mass is along the line joining the center of both the masses so this black line is line joining the center of both the spheres and somewhere towards the heavier mass if say m1 is greater than m2 then the center of mass would be more towards m1 and if m2 is heavier than m1 then the center of mass would be towards the m2 but definitely it has to be along the line joining their center so i may call somewhere over here is the center of mass cm and then i may also draw r vector r cm which is the position vector of center of mass correct and then i may also write this point as x cm and then perpendicular on y then this point is y cm and i will also express x cm i cap plus y cm j cap that itself is equal to r cm correct so these are some basic things that you should understand before the derivation okay so now what we are again going to consider is i am going to make a graph again like this and then 
there are two particles m1 and m2 now see any two particles they would be definitely attracting each other with the gravitational force and gravitational force is always along the line joining their centers and gravitational force will exist in pairs right so this is force on particle one by particle two and then this is force on particle two by particle one and they are exactly opposite to one another along the line in line joining the centers now basically these are internal um, forces of a system now when i say system you are consider you are supposed to consider both the particles together right so both the particles together makes a system now if you look externally then i must say that i am exerting a force f1 on particle 1 having mass m1 and f2 on particle 2 so f1 is the external force which is being exerted from outside on particle 1 and f2 is the force which is exerted on particle 2 from outside whereas within the system there are two forces which are internal forces f12 and f21 whose magnitudes are equal but definitely they are opposite in direction so when i add f12 and f21 they would give zero as a resultant because they are internal forces inside the system both of them they are equal and opposite so inside the system the net force is zero yeah but from externally you are applying f1 on m1 and f2 on the particle having mass m2 correct so now let us look at a single particle having mass m1 now this particle is being pulled in this direction by force f12 force on one by two this is the force by particle number two and then of course there is another external force which is f1 by the way f1 and f2 they have different magnitudes right it's not compulsory to take them equal that's okay now what will happen as a result of this let's assume that this particle goes downwards with velocity v1 and this is the instantaneous velocity at that particular point i am not saying that this is a constant velocity because the under because under the effect of two forces at this moment of time the velocity is v1 which will change as time passes because there are forces acting on the system in the same way if i look at particle having mass m2 it is experiencing a force f21 and from above f2 as a result of which let's take the velocity of this particle in the downward direction you may take the velocity of this particle in any direction come on we are not supposed to go in micro analysis of this let's take the velocity and then we will look at the derivation you can take the velocity anywhere in the direction you want right but why did i take in the downward direction because i considered f12 and f21 to be gone so that's why in the direction of f1 the particle moves you can take it in any direction right so now let us consider only particle one and look at it right so we do know that f net is equal to mass into acceleration right now i'm going to uh, apply this particular equation for particle one and then particle two simultaneously right so f net is f1 plus f12 these are the two forces acting and on the particle having mass m1 and it's acceleration can be written as double derivative d2 upon dt2 of position vector r1 do you remember as i said that r1 is the position vector of the particle having mass m1 right so as i said that velocity is this now velocity this can be even extended d by d t of v that is acceleration and then d by dt of dr by dt that is acceleration once again so d2r by dt2 that is the second derivative of the uh, this position vector is acceleration so let's go ahead and now i will definitely cut it short for you let's apply this equation for the particle or having mass m2 so on it force f2 is acting of course f21 is also acting that is equal to mass m2 and acceleration is the second derivative of position vector r2 let's add these two equation so f1 plus f12 
plus. So left hand side with the left hand side of the equation. So this adds with this and that side adds with the right hand side. So F2 plus F21 that is equal to M1 D2R1 by DT2 plus M2 D2R2 by DT2. Okay. Now, we know that F12 and F21, they are equal and opposite forces. So, their sum is 0. So, F1 plus F2, that is equal to D2 by DT2. I am going to pull out common. So, it will be M1 R1 plus M2 R2. You may recall, see that this part and this part, actually it is not common. I have used which part? as an identity you remember i said i am going to use this so just i have done the inverse of this particular step right or you may um, just say that i am pulling out common but it's not correct we are not pulling out common this is the extended or if you do this and you will get this one but as of now let's consider that you have pulled out d2 d square upon dt2 as common right now what am i doing is please pay attention we are coming to the conclusion part F1 plus F2 that is equal to I am multiplying up M1 plus M2 upon M1 plus M2. I am multiplying and dividing this equation into D2 upon DT2 of M1 R1 plus M2 R2. I hope you do understand M2 R2 that it doesn't matter, right? Because M1 plus M2 upon M1 plus M2 is 1. Now I can even take this inside because any term suppose d by dt of i can say uh, 3 by 2 x that is equal to 3 by 2 of d by dt of x so even i can pull out this term outside or even i can put it inside because constant terms can be uh, even pulled in or out so that means f1 plus f2 which are the external forces on particles 1 and 2 and that is equal to d Okay, I should write down m1 plus m2, m1 plus m2 and then d square upon dt2 of m1 r1 plus m2 r2 upon m1 plus m2 because as I said, I am going to take this in, right? So, only the denominator I am going to put it in, right? Now, look at this carefully. What is this? This is the total external force acting on the system. You consider m1 and m2 mass suppose this was m1 mass and this is m2 mass you forget about these two masses and you only look at the center of mass now the center of mass the entire mass of the body is focused over there so the center of mass will be having mass m1 plus m2 correct and now f1 and f2 are the individual forces so i'm going to combine f1 and f2 both the forces and that force is only acting on the center of mass so, instead of looking two different particles experiencing two different forces, you know, and then going with different velocity, you can sum up by saying the entire mass is concentrated at the center of mass and the entire force that is F1 plus F2 is acting over there, right? So, this is the external force acting on the system and this is the total mass of the system that is capital M, mass of the system or it is the mass of the center of mass, right? Then multiplied by d square upon dt, of course, this is the second derivative of what? So, this is this part, right? I am not writing it, but this entire part will come here. Do you agree? So, f external is equal to m into what? So, definitely this should be acceleration. So, acceleration is equal to second derivative of dt2 times m1 r1 plus m2 r2 upon m1 plus m2. Now, please understand acceleration is second derivative of what? Position vectors. That means this part, this entire part is the position vector of what? Center of mass because f external is acting on center of mass. Total mass of the system is at the center of mass. So, this particular part which is in the bracket is the second derivative of what? position vector. So, position vector of what? Center of mass. So, RCM basically is equal to M1 R1 plus M2 R2 
in the vector form let's write it like this upon m1 plus m2 i'll have to assign the vector notation because on the other side as well we have the vector notation right. so this is it now you can even write x center of mass then you will only take m1 x1 plus m2 x2 upon m1 plus m2 if there are n particles m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 dot 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 m n x n upon m1 plus m2 plus m3 dot 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 till mn right so in the same way you can write the expression for y and z so i hope that this part was clear to all of you uh, if you have any doubts please do comment in the comment section and thank you very much for watching the video